Uh, welcome, everyone, from an uncharacteristically pleasant Boston, Massachusetts, on this November 5th. I uh, truly appreciate your time uh, joining us today, and I hope it's worthwhile to you. Uh, personally, I'm very excited to give you an overview of a new uh, whole slide scanning system uh, that we developed here at MMI. It's, uh, it's got a twist to it, and I'll go through some of that with you. Hopefully, it is appealing. We call this, this seminar or this webinar today Whole Slide Imaging and Beyond for those reasons, and it is a new platform for scanning and bioimaging. Again, I'm David Hitchries. My email is displayed here, and it will be presented again at the end. So I'd encourage you to take a screenshot of that or whatever you'd like to do in case there are questions that occur to you after the close of the Q&A session here today. We've allocated about 40 minutes for the content of this. I think we'll get through this quicker than that, leaving plenty of time for questions at the end. A tiny bit about MMI, because it's not the best known company, uh, but we are extremely focused in our particular domain, which is interacting with individual cells and groups of cells through a microscope. Been doing this for a little over 25 years. And like many of the great products in microscopy and imaging, this product line traces itself to a laboratory of a professor who found himself with certain needs for products that did not quite exist, so invented them himself. Uh, this is Professor Stefan Seeger at the University of Zurich. And back in around 1992, he was one of the pioneers in an area called laser tweezers or laser trapping. And uh, that became our, our first product line called Cell Manipulator, which is still used throughout the world. Cell Cut was the next product, and that's in the area of laser microdissection, which we will actually go into just a little bit today as it segues from the cell scan slide scanning system. Selector is another product from, from this group, and this is a microcapillary based unit for isolating cells that are perhaps free floating in a solution or even slightly adherent at the bottom of a dish or a plate or a well or some such uh, specimen prep. Uh, circulating tumor cells, for example. Cell Explorer is a product introduced fairly recently, and this is a software product for automatically identifying cells and structures of interest for the purpose of isolating them using either microdissection or the capillary-based approach. But again, you're here today for CellScan, which is the latest in our product offering, and this is the, the whole slide scanning system. We've been doing this for a little over 25 years. We have over uh, approximately today 600 units installed of various kinds uh, currently in operation. We have distrib distributors throughout the world and a global support network as well. Cell scan system, shown, shown here in a representative form. Uh, I will stress throughout the presentation that the actual microscope being used uh, can be decided by you. We can go with probably your favorite platform, although we have some preferences. This particular embodiment for cell scan is shown on a Nikon TS2R microscope. It consists of some basic hardware, a high performance camera, an XYZ precision stage, software, the option of a touch panel screen here, and uh, my colleague is shown here on the right interacting with it. Every unit we sell does come with, uh, I'd like to say fractional ownership of our application support team and the uh, uh, global support team as well as myself. As we get through today's presentation, uh, I will try to reinforce that yes, what we have here is a high performance slide scanner, uh, but it can do very much more. And that's uh, by virtue of the type of platform that it can be installed upon. So we will get into tissue scanning, which is why I believe the majority of people are present today at this webinar. But we will go in a little bit on fluorescence imaging, live cell imaging, uh, time-lapse, et cetera. Um, and of course, how this system can be utilized in conjunction with or upstream of laser microdissection. Tissue scanning. What I'd like to present here is that the system, although it's very uh, highly evolved and uh, quite advanced underneath, to the user, we don't expect our users to be uh, to, to consider themselves to be advanced microscopists. And we've, we've addressed that in the workflow. One simply steps up to the microscope, places up to four slides that they've prepared onto the stage and presses uh, or, or activates the software and presses go. The system will 
effectively perform these functions, starting with a pre-scan, which you'll see in a video in a moment. We'll pre-scan very quickly where the system identifies where there is relevant biology on the slide, and then it will switch to a higher level of magnification after studying where the uh, any kind of topological differences which might require a focus change. It will then scan at a high resolution, whatever you choose that to be, fairly typical to do a 20X, and then it will write out to wherever you tell it to a standard image format utilized for whole slide imaging, one of the standards being Big TIFF. Uh, that's fairly ubiquitous. It's a file format that allows for easy transfer and fast opening and drilling down to high resolution very quickly. For those who are not entirely f uh, aware or familiar with uh, how, how whole slide scanning typically works, what I'm showing you here is a representation of how imaging software and hardware can be utilized and synchronized to acquire a series of images in a raster scan format and assemble those edge to edge to comprise one single large image. So what we've done here is we've synchronized the camera with the precision X, Y stage, and we've simply moved from X to Y and then down X across the X direction and, and then in Y and acquired a sequence of images and put them edge to edge. Now, if one looks fairly closely, you'll see some edge, edge issues here. I'm pointing to one where you can see, you know, one image kind of abuts against the next, but not quite perfectly. So some of the advancements in whole slide imaging have to do with how those uh, these images can be overlapped so that they are in fact a, an exact and precise representation of the underlying specimen. That has a lot to do with precision of the stage movement. It has a lot to do with stability of the entire microscope setup. And it has also to do with how precisely one auto adjusts the focus on specimens which can often be somewhat wavy along the Z or focus direction. So after those have been taken into account and shown here in our software called Cell Viewer, uh, one can see any artifacts for edges and such are completely eliminated. Uh, this of course gives one total confidence in not only point-to-point uh, -point measurements, but the visual representation of the specimen. Focus maps, the way we do it here, this happens uh, invisible to the user, although they can access it if they choose to manually. But in, in most uh, situations, the user, again, simply places their samples on the stage and begins the acquisition protocol. And the system will automatically find a, and generate a focus map, which will then use during the, the high speed scan at high magnification. One of the keys to doing a whole slide imaging is speed. Uh, folks are also very interested in being able to step up and watch the scanning process happen, see that they got the results that they want with great confidence and then step away, perhaps to analyze the images at home or at their desk or to share them with colleagues, uh, students, et cetera. So this system has been set up to be a high performance slide scanner, although it's implemented on an off the shelf uh, microscope. We can scan a typical 15 millimeter square section with a 20X high mag objective in under 60 seconds. That's considered quite, quite speedy. Uh, scan, we can scan tissue mounted on glass slides. We can scan tissue on membrane slides for laser microdissection. And the system can essentially handle almost any type of specimen you can imagine that you would present to a typical uh, uh, inverted microscope. Those can be dishes, well plates, really almost anything. This video uh, shows a very quick overview of the image acquisition process on the cell scan system. So you see the four slides on the stage here being very quickly scanned. You'll see the live result here. This is real time, by the way, uh, in the, in the uh, companion software with a thumbnail being built to the right, moves on to the next slide and scans that also very rapidly. Remember, a focus map has already been determined. It does that automatically on the fly and then images at your high magnification objective lens and assembles your, um, your stitched image for you. This is real time, does happen very quickly. So those images have been saved. We would next typically go into our viewer software, open 
one of the slide images, the one is just acquired. There's the thumbnail overview of the relevant biology on that particular slide. And of course, using your, your mouse uh, roller wheel, et cetera, just simply for the interaction with the slider on the software, you can zoom into the true resolution that was acquired. Zero latency on all of this, that's courtesy of not only how efficiently the software loads these rather large images, typically two to three gigabytes a piece, um, but also the big TIFF file format. As threatened, we'll go on to some of the capabilities that extend beyond tissue scanning. Because this is built on a research grade inverted microscope, you have all microscope imaging modes available to you without exception. That includes, of course, bright field imaging, commonly employed, uh, fluorescence in individual or multiple channels of fluorescence. One can add confocal capabilities, uh, really almost any, not almost any, any imaging modality, uh, which would be collected on a high quality scientific grade camera can be performed on the cell scan system. We can utilize all objective lenses from 2X up to 100 and 100 plus X, uh, immersion objectives, draw, uh, air objective silicon, whatever is best for your specimens and as your lab needs change. We handle all sample formats that can be presented onto a microscope. And that goes to 96 well plates, glass slides, with or without cover slips, dishes, wells, etc. cetera. Um, you'll see an example coming up momentarily where we are doing some live cell imaging work with our scanner. The point here is that system is completely upgradable. It is future proof. As your research needs change, the system can be adapted to meet those. Uh, upgrade cameras, change out really anything, add different modalities, phase, DIC, whatever imaging types you, you, your, you, you or your colleagues would require. And if you're not always doing whole slide imaging, the system is utilizable as a high grade research microscope. Our system includes a motor for doing for uh, for changing in the Z direction for autofocus. That can be also uh, leveraged for doing uh, Z stack time lapse imaging, be it through fluorescence or any of the modalities, bright field. Uh, usually using a high numerical aperture lens for doing optical sectioning, one can acquire a sequence of images along the Z axis, do it extremely quickly, and do it while scanning large areas or just focusing on a small area. And that can be done, of course, over time as well to observe the motion of living cells or how they're proliferating or reacting to therapeutic compounds, et cetera. Uh, that's done with a stage incubator. I'll show you an image of one of those in just a moment. The system can be combined with laser microdissection. That's kind of what drove us here at MMI to develop this. We found a need for people who want to do a lot of, uh, of, of uh, whole slide imaging or a reasonable amount of it, and then annotate their specimens separately, sit at their desk, circle the cells or areas of interest that they wish to have collected for further analysis, uh, send that image file, which has the annotations to somebody who possesses a laser micro dissection system, such as ours, the cell cut, have their specimens collected in a sterile way and, and uh, analyzed for uh, uh, proteomics or genomics and have the data sent back to them. So effectively, one can have a cell scan scanner anywhere in the world, scan their specimens, annotate them as they wish, ship the slides off to wherever the uh, laser micro dissection system is and then upload their shape files to that instrument for laser micro dissection. So what is CellScan at its core? It, it truly is a high resolution camera. Uh, this in particular case, it's a high definition color, high speed camera. Um, it can collect a very large image on a, the largest of slides uh, in less than seven minutes at high magnification. Again, more typical would be about 60 seconds for a, um, uh, for a 15 millimeter by 15 millimeter sample. And it's also synchronized with a precision motorized stage. And that information about uh, uh, localization and positioning of the stage is coordinated by our cell tools software so the camera and 
the stage are highly uh, synchronized. Therefore, we can do the stitching and location. And therefore, somebody can also annotate down to the individual cell level, circle a cell in the image and say, I want to collect that one or I want to measure that one and get precise measurements out of it and precise laser micro dissect dissection of such samples as well downstream, should that be an area they wish to go. I'll touch a little bit about the cell viewer software, which is a companion piece of software to this approach. So this is a small piece of software that allows for the opening, manipulation, study, zooming in, et cetera, of these big TIFF files. And of course, those big TIFF files are compatible, as I said earlier, with the vast majority of other analysis software packages for pathology images. We allow you to mark and annotate your cells, regions of interest. You can measure distances. Uh, this software is perfect for sharing your images with colleagues. They can open it and analyze and see your annotations and measurements, uh, collaborate real time on a shared image, et cetera. So that makes it also very useful in teaching environments. Because you can study your, your images after you've acquired them, when if they happen to be fluorescence and photo bleaching is a problem, uh, this allows you to acquire the specimen image extremely quickly, minimizing photo bleaching, and then study them and analyze them at your leisure. Of course, once they're captured, photo bleaching is no longer an issue. Uh, export and reload your mark areas. So again, uh, one can put many different types of annotations as an overlay onto their specimen image. It's never destructive of the image. It's a, it's a layer that sits above them. That layer can be exported and reloaded to anyone else who possesses the software so that you can see they can share annotations. That same functionality is used for exporting shapes uh, to be used for laser microdissection. So this software essentially has been designed to enable and, um, and make easy remote workflows. Uh, we found a lot of situations where pathologists uh, wish to have study images at their leisure, at their desk or at home, uh, and then share those annotated images later. This software allows for that. Best of all, we provide unlimited free copies of the software. Uh, just install it on any uh, PC and it'll run and un like an unlimited license is on this one that comes with our cell scan product. Just a full screenshot showing the CellView software very quickly. And you can see this user has identified several different types of cells and indicated their, uh, their difference with a color. So one can set different, uh, let's call them species or cell types, give them a unique name, mark them up here. There's a measurement bar here, scale bar. You can also do point to point measurements, uh, change your colors, interact with uh, the various color channels uh, that are present. Um, scan around, zoom in, very interactive and self-explanatory. That's our cell viewer software. Should one be looking at fluorescence images, uh, we, we present other options specific for interacting with those images. You know, namely, you can see some sliders here for individually adjusting the contribution of each color channel. You know, should one um, channel be overwhelmed by another, you can adjust those to your liking and still have all the same functionality as before in terms of identifying and annotating cells um, or areas of interest. Stressing this throughout, this is a key differentiator for the cell scan product versus any other slide scanner that I've encountered. Uh, it is a normal research microscope and we will apply, we, we can um, uh, integrate our camera and precision stage onto virtually any inverted microscope. We prefer the Nikons or Olympus because that gives us access to their uh, control uh, software codes for doing other types of work, such as interacting with their uh, objective lens turrets and light sources and such. But if you should happen to have a manual microscope, our system works perfectly with that as well. It would simply prompt you during the process to switch your objective lens when the time is right to go to your higher mag or low mag or open a shutter, close a shutter, that type of thing. Uh, but I think most people do find the workflow is, is, is uh, far less tedious with a fully motorized scope. And for those, again, we prefer any, really almost any of the Nikon or Olympus, although Zeiss and Leica can be supported as well with some limitations. We can support any sample format, as I mentioned before, and that includes Petri dishes, 96 well plates, 384 well plates, whatever you wanna place on your microscope, we really don't care. Um, 
any objective, including phase contrast, I could add DIC here as well, and any other imaging modality, any fluorescence filter sets, um, any type, well, there's, a, I shouldn't say any, but we're compatible with a wide variety of digital cameras. The ones we ship by default with the system are, are extremely powerful, very sensitive, full color camera with a high, a high speed readout. But no, in some cases where we're, you're photon starved doing very low light level fluorescence, we have solutions for that as well. It could be added on. And those images of course can be pseudo colored uh, should you desire to present them as a color image. There's no additional re uh, equipment required. Um, this is one system for both scanning and microscopy. So it's a very nice unified uh, approach. It utilizes very little lab space, uh, bench space. And I like to stress it is entirely future proof, which does differentiate it from the majority of slide scanners. So here's what it is not. This is not a dedicated box type of a scanner system. There are many of those on the market where one can load an individual slide or even place it adjacent to a robotic device for feeding slides into it. It's not a high throughput scanner for that reason. This is a microscope that happens to scan slides very, very quickly and has uh, software capabilities built to make that super simple. <clears throat> but again, it's not, a, it's not typically adjacent to a slide hotel. Uh, it's not for the highest throughput type of environments. Uh, perhaps some people attending are familiar with NanoZoomer and Olympus makes some. There, there's a wide variety of very high throughput scanners, uh, but they're also fairly limiting, quite limiting in terms of their apl applicability for other imaging modalities. This is not a fixed setting scanner limited to one or two objectives or one imaging mode or one type of slide. I hope I stressed that here. That really is um, the key point of cell scan. I mentioned earlier that I would mention I would go through a live cell imaging application. There are just a couple of slides on this one here. Um, in this particular case, we placed uh, a stage top incubator, which controls the temperature, as we did here to 37C. It will it will maintain a, a certain CO2 uh, set CO2 level and humidity, allowing cells to proliferate and grow in a very comfortable environment for extended period of times. And again, that sits in this case right here on top of the microscope stage. So it's fairly low invasive. One doesn't need to wrap the entire microscope in a large container or place it into a specialized room. In here, we happen in this case to be using a, um, a, an eight well uh, slide that holds 400 microliters per well. And in, the, in these wells are growing uh, HeLa cells. We image these we scanned this and imaged, uh, we took a, uh, one image every 30 minutes and did this for 24 hours. And here's the resultant image from that showing viability. And in fact, the, the fact that these cells are very happy and proliferating. Um, as you can see from the caption here up until this final image, which is 24 hours later from the beginning. The segue to laser microdissection is, of course, quite strong here, as I mentioned earlier. So laser microdissection, for those who are not terribly familiar with it, it's been around a very long time, very powerful technique. Um, we're into, the, into a whole new generation of instruments here uh, designed for doing uh, or extracting down to the single cell level with great precision and while maintaining the integrity specifically uh, uh, of, of the cells for doing proteomics, downstream proteomics, and genomics work, you know, uh, DNA sequencing, RNA sequencing. That used to be quite a challenge for the earlier generations of laser microdissection systems, um, but a number of, uh, of improvements have come about in the past five, six years that have uh, enabled us to preserve specimen integrity uh, uh, tremendously, make the specimens very useful for that kind of analysis and get down to even a single cell level while maintaining sterility. So a lot of things came together. We have a product we call Cell Cut, and as a companion or as a, down, uh, a, a downstream process for cell scan, it's a very compelling uh, workflow. I happen to show here an image of what was my demonstration system. This one is built on an Olympus IX83, although again, we don't really care about the microscope too much. Uh, here's the laser assembly for laser microdissection I'm pointing at in the back. And this one also just happens to be equipped with an optional um, microcapillary device selector 
which is for picking and placing cells in suspension. So that the, the, both of those are on the system. And cell scan software can also be installed on this system for doing routine slide scanning. And I'll just place here, if anybody uh, attending is specifically interested in learning more about laser microdissection, just toss me a note to the email on the uh, intro and outro slides, and we'll set that up either one-on-one -on -one or you know, one to many. It's a fascinating area that's undergone a lot of uh, uh, evolution recently. So here's a workflow, a lot going on in this slide, but I'll walk through it quickly here. Um, this is a typical workflow for microdissection with scanning being in the middle here. So of course you, set, you, you prepare your sample as you wish, H and E or whatever your, your favorite types of staining are to, to develop the contrast you wish to, to have to help you identify what you want. Here's where slide scanning happens. Typically one does scan an area very quickly, find the relevant biology, zoom in on that, annotate what you wish to excise using laser microdissection, or perhaps you're just annotating for the point of sharing this with colleagues, uh, studying it, that's for your own records, uh, uploading your result to a server somewhere. Um, and in, in this case, this person is using a little pen and they're highlighting the cells of interest. They have then shipped that um, shape file to wherever the microdissection system happens to be, again, shown with an image I'm familiar with from the previous slide. Uh, that user, wherever they are in the universe, uh, can perform the cell excision and capture into a sterile cuvette. Typically, cell lysis occurs and the uh, specimen is sent for analysis. Interestingly here, uh, what's really going on is we have two different groups. We have pathologists, um, in, in many cases, the research biologists, identifying cells of interest and the comfort of their facility using specimens they have labeled and scanned. They're very familiar with them. They annotate them. The data uh, representing those annotations is sent to someone who is a specialist in laser microdissection and capture. And then those people will send the sample to those who are specialists in um, uh, typically RNA sequencing or the analytics associated with proteomics and genomics. And the end researcher simply gets back a report with the information that they were hoping to see. So again, all they've done is sample prep in most cases identification of what they're interested in, and then they get back the data they want. The collection and such is done elsewhere. This is a very brief video showing laser microdissection um, underway. This, you see the previous examples on an on Olymposcope. This one happens to be on a Nikon scope, again, stressing the fact that uh, we can place our equipment onto virtually any microscope that, you're, that happens to be your favorite. Um, and in this case, we'll start this quick video. I'll direct your attention to an inset window down here in the left that will show up in just a second. This is showing how we capture um, the uh, tissue or the specimen in a sterile way. Okay, so here's the inset window showing the capture device. What's happening here is the scan, the high-speed scan. You're familiar with this from earlier in the presentation. That's the cell scan software affecting a very high-speed scan. And then the user will zoom in as they wish to identify cell or cells or objects of interest. Okay. Zooming in down here in the thumbnail on the right. Okay. Okay. Another scan at higher magnification in that subregion. This is a uh, Eppendorf style cuvette, which is uh, awaiting the capture of the cells that they that they express interest in collecting. The user is simply zooming in to find the cell and or cells of interest, in this case, an individual cell. They're highlighting the perimeter of it, the pen tool you see there. Okay, there it is in the center of the screen with its annotation around it. 
And now the laser from the laser micro dissection device is simply going to follow that profile, liberating the cell from the rest of the tissue. In the lower left corner, you may have noticed, I'll rewind just a little, that this, this device here will be lowered and raised. I got to back, a little, back up a little bit more. So the laser is cut around the cell. Okay, you'll see that again now. I'll direct your attention to this lower corner and you'll see this cuvette be lowered and raised. And you'll see the cell has been picked up from the rest of the tissue. Now the user is moving over to focus in on the cap of that Eppendorf style tube and confirm that they collected the one cell they want and there's no contamination. So the next and final step is simply lift this device, close this cuvette. There's usually a lysis fluid in here, or they'll apply some and then um, send it off for analysis. Okay, laser micro dissection. That's a whole science in and of itself. And again, I'm happy to uh, go into detail with anyone who's interested in that. I'm sorry, I left the presentation there. Okay. Cell scan summary, what is it? We know it to be the most flexible whole slide imaging system on the market. Uh, it's it's a scanner as I went through. It can uh, it can acquire images at any resolution that you desire or feel that you need, be it low or super high. Uh, we can handle essentially any sample type that you can present to a microscope. We can do up five dimensional imaging, which is X, Y, and Z over time in color, uh, various colors. Some people say you can do 10 dimension. That kind of drives me a little crazy, but we can we can certainly do X, Y, and Z, multiple focus, focal um, points. We can image over time, and we can image all of the colors that your fluorescence cubes can present to us or filter wheels, whatever other equipment you have. It outputs in a standard image format that's highly transferable, shareable, and it's a microscope. You can do anything with it. You can do the microscope, and that includes confocal or other more advanced uh, imaging modalities. If anyone is doing light sheet work, I'd be interested in chatting with them as well to see if perhaps we can do some work on a, uh, in a developmental biology lab using light sheet microscopy. Uh, it's very upgradable, therefore. New cameras, replace the camera, should that be necessary down the line, or the stage, or objectives, or really almost anything. It's, um, it makes sure that the investment you made on the front end is one you get a lot of use out of way into the future. And that's what I had. I threatened to finish early and I think I made good. Uh, if anybody is in fact interested in a remote demonstration of this instrument or even micro dissection, uh, maybe even the capillary device, be sure to toss me an email and we'll make that happen. We can do it on specimens that we already possess just to give you an idea of workflow or if, you're, if it's appropriate for your types of specimens, we can receive those and have you direct us as to what you'd like us to do and show you how it works.